837 on the Big 550 KTRS. Uh, David Stokes is with us. He's with us every uh, Monday. He is a analyst for the Show Me Institute and a friend of the show. Good morning, uh, David Stokes. Good morning, McGraw. You are now a uh, writer, editorial writer. You have an op-ed piece in uh, our local hometown newspaper. And I appreciate the Post-Dispatch running that last week. Yeah, quickly, how does that work? Do you just call and say, I- I'd like to write something, or do you just send it in, or how does that work? Well, our communications director, Rick Edlund, is yeah. also a friend of the show. Yes. He, uh, he is in charge of, of pitching our, our work to media outlets around the state. Gotcha. And so he pitched this idea, and the editorial board said, great, why don't you write something? Or you wrote it and then pitched it. To right, them. they they liked it and they they put it in the print version and online on their webpage. Uh, we appreciate it. All right, so reform city manager rules in Missouri, written by David Stokes. What 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 is the premise of your op-ed piece? The premise is an attempt to to try and draw some good public policy changes from the debacle in Ellisville, and not to necessarily go on going forward and still refight those battles, but to say, here are some of the problems that we had in Ellisville and how can we improve public policy in Missouri and learn from it. And one of the problems there is sort of overly strict city manager rules. The, the cities in Missouri, the several dozen of them, including a, probably two dozen in St. Louis County, with special city charters and city managers, most of them have very strict rules on local officials, elected officials, having any contact with city employees other than the city manager. Sort of an outright prohibition on doing it. Right. And that's not a good thing. That is way, way too strict. And as we saw in Ellisville, one of the things the mayor was impeached for was having a very minor contact with a, with a city contractor that nobody suggested was any big deal at all. It's just he made the mistake of having this contact, so they enforced their charter pro- prohibition and said this is one of the things we're going to remove you for here's what i understand about ellisville and that is he was impeached because this this person asked a question of the mayor where was this guy supposed to go for the information where was this guy supposed to go for the answer if you can't go to the mayor who should you go to right precisely (laughs) this that's the point of the up-end and you've you've phrased it very well (laughs) Where are you supposed to go if you're in the political minority on your city council and you can't, the city manager is aligned with the majority and the city manager is working with the majority and you don't trust that city manager to give you the straight information. Right. Or they're just refusing to. Where do you go as an elected official? And under these rules, the blanket prohibitions against contact with elected officials other than the city manager, you technically can't go anywhere. And a city manager, I understand the idea is that there's a council that's beholden to the public. The council hires a manager. It's a manager's full-time job to run the city. They and then the, the manager then brings things up to the board, the passes the board. But but the city manager works at the discretion of the city council more or less. So the city the city manager and the city attorney don't work for the majority or the minority. They work for everybody. And so that's they should be above reproach and be nonpartisan in, in every way, shape, or form. But that clearly wasn't the case in Ellisville. And it's not the case in, in reality in, in most cities. I mean, the city manager and the city attorney, you're right. They should be Caesar's wife and above right. reproach. But the reality of democracy is that they're generally going to be aligned with the council with the mayor and the council majority or the council majority without the mayor, as you saw in Ellisville, that hires them and can easily fire them. And if you run afoul of that group and you're on the opposite side of the city manager, it becomes what economists would call an information asymmetry problem, where in order to do your job as an elected official, you're going to have a great deal of trouble getting the required information to, to do that job. To ask the, How do you ask the tough questions right. if you can't get the information in order to form a basis for the question. How hard is it to change these rules? Well, it, it generally it would be hard. I mean, it would involve a, a city redoing its city charter. The, the language in city charters that have city managers generally is something along the lines of, except for purposes of inquiry, city, all city, elected city officials shall only direct their comments or discussion with the city manager. And they don't really define what inquiry means, so we did a little research and ask some questions and it it inquiry is generally defined as formal investigations as if as if you're going to launch an investigation with subpoenas and that type of thing then you can talk to other city officials 
But we found some cities, generally pretty pretty much places where everybody's getting along at the moment, right. they'll define inquiry very loosely. Oh, it's no big deal. You can go and ask a general question. You just can't start bossing people around. Right. And that's really how it, it should work. But in those places, they're only a, a splinter, a, a faction away from, from reinstituting the tougher rules, I think. What's, what's, what's fascinating is that these city managers who are never elected by the, the, uh, are the people, in some instances, have a lot more power than the uh, elected officials. Absolutely, McGraw. I mean, these full-time people, they've got the information, they've got the knowledge, they've got the data, they've got the, the history. Right. City managers, it, it can be a tough job. They can be king of the city one day, then elections bring in a new group, and you're out the next. But when they're, if they're popular and, and in with the majority in that city, they can absolutely be the most powerful people in that city. It goes to show you that the bureaucrats down in Jefferson City or the bureaucrats in Washington are much more powerful uh, let's just take Jefferson City, are, are much more powerful today because of term limits. The guys come, they learn exactly where the bathrooms are and, and the doors are, and by that time they got to leave and the bureaucrats stay for 15, 20, 30 years. So the bureaucrats are teaching these new guys every six years what's going on. So who's, who's more valuable, the, the elected officials or the bureaucrats? Well, it's, it's, there's an entire field of economics called public choice economics, which that's one of the key points to it in that – the bureaucracies, boy, do they wield an amazing amount of power. And sometimes they do it for the public good, and sometimes they do it for the good of the bureaucracy. And sometimes they do it because they just don't feel like getting up out of their chair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we've all been there where the, the, you, know, you get your boat license, your car license, your real estate this, your title for that, and you're like, what? Just tell me what I, I mean. You feel violated. You feel, you feel worse other than going through a TSA screening other than walking into a bureaucratic office to get something. And, you know, thank God for the Department of Motor Vehicles. Because if it wasn't for the DMV, I think people would have a, a much more positive view of government. And as somebody who believes in <laughs> limited government, I think it's a good thing that people generally every couple of years have, a, have an average at best experience w- with the DMV. So you're saying, you're saying that... You, people's experience with the DMZ is so poor that that bolsters your argument. Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. And thank God for it. I have never had a good experience at a Department of Motor Vehicles um, trip. Never. Never never once. Um, getting my learner's permit back when I was 16 years old, I was like, this is maddening. Why, why, why is it like this? And yet, you know, it still continues today. And it's, it's like that, whether that be on... Long Island or here in Missouri or wherever you go. That's I, just the, a truism of life. I can't handle these people are like, excuse me, you don't have Form 17B-5. Where is that? Well, you have to go home and have your mother sign it. It's like, uh, I'm, but I just waited in this line for 20 minutes, and now i got to go back. It, I mean, just pull your hair out crazy. Um, oh, my favorite movie all time is the movie Brazil. And if you've never seen it, go check it out. It's got some amazing scenes of, of Robert De Niro and the other characters in it trying to deal with bureaucracy. <laughs> Brazil? Brazil. It's a tremendous movie. When did that come out? Uh, it's a Terry Gilliam directed movie f- from Monty Python. Yeah. It came out in the mid 1980s. All right. Is it as good as uh, Midnight Run? I, I love Midnight Run too, <laughs> but I think Brazil is the best movie I've ever seen. Serrano's got the discs. Serrano's got the discs. <laughs> hey, Moron Number One, put put Moron Number Two on the phone. Uh, I, I heard they're going to make a sequel to Midnight Run. I, you know, that's always scary when they try and do that to such a great movie. A great it movie. generally does not have a positive outcome. We have uh, digressed to talking about Midnight Run here. Um, but uh, ultimately with um, Ellisville, uh, I guess we're still waiting for the, for the courts to rule on all that, and we're just sort of in a lull before the next uh, storm arises with Ellisville. But those people of Ellisville, they are literally, they, they have no recourse they keep voting all of these these people in who are against this tiff for this Walmart, and yet the the more they vote in people who are against this, the more they get it. Well, it's like Kent Brockman on The Simpsons when he famously said, "Just more evidence, people, that democracy just doesn't work." <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, nobody wants to think that way, and of course, democracy does work, and it works great. But Ellisville has been a very frustrating experience for people who want to see. Citizen activism and democracy work. Democracy works. Just don't look at Ellisville. Right. Exactly. <laughs> David Stokes, uh, anything else we need to know? Just you can check out everything we've written and 
And uh, on the, the op-ed and the city managers, you can either see that at stltoday.com or you can go to our website, showmeinstitute.org. You know, speaking of uh, bureaucrats and how much power they, they wield, Friday we had uh, Tom Deal on, majority leader, and it came up that Nixon, you know, vetoed the tax cuts. And one of the reasons why he vetoed the tax cuts was because there was a tax increase on seniors for prescription drugs. And when asked about it, they said, oh, well, the bureaucrats put it in there. <laughs> what, what? The bureaucrats stuck in a tax increase in a tax cut bill, and nobody reads the bills. Nobody caught it. You have to rely on these bureaucrats. And so that just goes to show you how powerful these, the, these bureaucrats really are. It's a, and the bureaucrats who are at least ostensibly working for the, under the Nixon administration right now. I mean, right. you report to the governor primarily. So it's a great example of these types of problems. And we've got a lot of writings on our blog at Show Me Daily as to why vetoing that, that tax cut bill was a mistake, and I'd encourage people to check that out. So you think that was a mistake even though it raised taxes on seniors when their prescription drugs? Well, I'm not certain I'm not certain how that came about. I trust the, the story is relayed is, is how it was done. I do think the benefits from cutting the corporate and the personal income tax taxes in there would have been excellent over time, and the legislature could have fixed that problem very quickly next year had it, had it chose to. That is David Stokes, ladies and gentlemen. The website again? Showmeinstitute.org. David Stokes, we uh, will talk to you next Monday. Have a good week. Thank you, McGraw. Any more uh, op-ed pieces coming down the line in our local hometown newspaper? I hope. Right. I, don't, I don't know of any one set, but I certainly hope so. That, was, uh, that came uh, was Sunday, June 5th. David Stokes, the title is Reform City Manager Rules in M- Missouri, written by David Stokes.